right around uh, 2004 when the Warsaw uh, AK-47 um, was allowed to come into the United States. Uh, I bought one right away and I remember um, um, the gun store was in the same town that my mother lived in and uh, I'd always go over there and mow her lawn for her and when I was in town and do some chores for her. And, uh, Anyway, I stopped in after I picked this up at the gun store and uh, I walked in the house with the case and she wanted to see my new gun that I bought and she looked at it and she says, wow, is that thing ugly? She says, is that used? <laughs> She's used to seeing brownings and weather bees and marlins and stuff. So um, she thought it was kind of rough looking and I said, no, this is, this is brand new. I'm Riveru Bay, and welcome to my gun kingdom. In this video today, uh, we're going to cover some stuff that you might not have for an SHTF scenario. Um, and you know, something that you might not have ever thought about having and that is some extra parts for your either your AR-15 that you have you've decided to use or your AK-47 that you've decided to use for the SHTF scenario. Now um, both of them have their pros and cons of course but so the, the first things that we want to go over are the magazines and um, for you know, for just regular going to the range and maybe going hunting and things like that, um, your polymer magazines would be fine. Um, the only thing is, I dropped one um, the other day, and so, and it's for my Zastava um, um, ZPAP M70, and now I have a hard time, um, you know, um, putting it in the gun now. and. Um, so I think I, what I did is I messed up the, uh, the feed lips here on the sides at the top. And so it's having a hard time going in. Um, but anyway, you know, in an SHTF scenario, these, these would not be the wise choice. Um, you know, you're gonna have campfires going on and stuff like that in that kind of a situation. So these, if they had ever fallen in the fire for some reason, they would burn up and uh, they'd be destroyed so you wouldn't be able to use them. So your best choice for SHTF scenario um, are the steel uh, mags. Now this is a 308 for my sniper rifle. And the way, and it, you, know, it, you know, you can kind of feel the steel, but if you need to test it more, just put a magnet on it. And, okay, so that's another way to test it. And then your aluminum, which are much lighter. And this one is for my... Um, SP1 here, Colt, and um, now this is somewhat lighter. You know, if you're looking for, well, you might say, well, these polymers are so much lighter. Well, that, that's true, but um, they're not as durable. You know, they might be lighter, but they're not going to hold up. But these aluminum ones are better, even if you would kind of bend your, drop it and dent or bend your feed lips there. You could actually probably try to work it out to where it would be usable. But once you uh, drop one of these polymer magazines you're really out of luck because if you crack them or split them or whatever chip them uh, they're not any good anymore so well the other day um, I wanted to get a 20 round a magazine so I could bring my Warsaw on and uh, it's on another video that I talked about not having a um, less than 30 round magazine that we can't use on YouTube so and it makes it really uh, it really slows me down as a creator to get videos to you is when, when they have that rule about not being able to use 30 or plus rounds magazines so uh, so anyway um, I found this one this is a 15 round magazine for my uh, Warsaw here and I'm really glad that I found this because this is a Hungarian um, uh, magazine and um, this this one is really durable. I mean, this one, of course, is. Oh, I lost my here's here's the magnet here. 
So, you know, this, this one's really, really durable and it's, it's all steel, but uh, this, one is, this one is really solid. So this is perfect for my Warsaw and it's only 15 rounds. So, you know, just be aware that, you know, you're not gonna be able to, it wouldn't be a wise choice to get a polymer um, stock up on those just because they're lightweight. Um, your steel, yeah, they're somewhat heavier. This one's really heavy for a 15 round magazine. A lot heavier than the aluminum ones, but these are the ones, these are the ones you want uh, for that type of situation that you're in. But anyway, um, but you know, more than anything else is, is uh, are the components of, of your rifles, whichever one you choose. Now, with the Colt SP-1, and this is going to vary um, by make and model too, is you have about 131 total components for this rifle, give or take. Okay, like I said, depending on the make and model of your AR, you'll have around 131 parts, whereas the AK-47 only has a total of 70 components altogether. So um, I talked about, um, uh, you know, not having to clean this gun. Well, a viewer wrote in, I'm glad he wrote in, and said something, you never really have to clean an AK-47. Well, I know, he, he took me for my word, but that's okay. Um, you know, it's just, you're not gonna, you're not, if you see something jammed in there or, or something that needs to be cleaned out, and if you don't have a cleaning kit, I mean, you take like an old rag or something and try to keep it as clean as possible. Um, now, you might not have a cleaning rod either, but you know, these have less components, so it's less likely that things are gonna get dirty, right? So that, that's, what I, that's what I meant by you'd probably never have to clean them. You know, not for a very, very long time. I had a viewer who commented on that, and he said probably not for a very, very, very long time. So that's what I meant by, I didn't really mean by never, never, never have to clean them. I mean, of course, we're, if we're in a home environment and everything's fine and we're not in an SHT scenario, then yeah, keep the gun clean. It's not, it's not like you want to um, you know, let them stay dirty. But if you're ever into that SHTF scenario, this one would probably be the less likely one that you would have to clean because there's, like I said, there's only 70 uh, components total. So for the major components of each one, uh, the Colt SP-1 has around 31 major components, where the AK-47 has only 15 major components, but 70 components altogether and 131, give or take, by maker model for the, the AR-15. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, the less components you have when you take them apart, if you have to clean them or you have cleaning equipment, you're not gonna have as many parts with the AK-47. And also, in another video I mentioned, always lay a white towel down. If you have something white, that you can lay it down when you take it. That way the parts will stand out better on a white towel. So let's start out with, with the extra parts that you would need for the AR-15. And that's an extractor for number one. Um, and also an extractor pin, or an extractor spring that you, you should have extra too. Uh, not only can those parts become easily lost, but also they can, they can crack break and then you won't be able to extract your spent shells that you're firing so make sure you have an extra one of those and then another thing that's uh, more likely to break on an AR-15 is the bolt uh, especially in the 15 but not the AR-10 um, you don't pretty much have that problem <clears throat> because it's a little more heavier duty but the AR-15 you want to have an extra bolt And also the firing pin can crack or break under heavy military surplus type of ammo uh, that you might be using. So you want to have an extra firing pin. Okay, and then also have an extra gas tube assembly uh, for your AR-15. Um, those can come, those can wear out over time and uh, that's really the least likely thing to break down on an AR-15, but just have an extra one of those and, and also the uh, have some extra pins uh, for that assembly too. So, okay, and then also you want the uh, firing pin, retaining pin. 
uh, make sure you have an extra one of those. So those are the parts that can that are pretty much able to fail on an AR-15. And so now let's go to the AK-47 and talk about the extra parts you should have for this. Again, and they're pretty they're pretty similar to what you have for the AR-15. Okay, for the AK-47, they're somewhat different. Um, there is one thing that you should have, and that is the extractor. Uh, have an extra extractor for your AK-47. After time, they just wear out, and then they can crack. And then uh, the recoil spring become, can become weakened, and that might need to be replaced too. So have an extra recoil spring. Another thing that kind of they've had problems with with the AK is the gas tube be can become uh, misaligned and uh, or or it can be damaged too so you want an extra gas tube and then uh, the trigger pins uh, they've had some problems with the trigger pins so have some extra trigger pins um, and then we've already talked about the the magazine issues now um, one thing that uh, I've noticed about the Warsaw compared to the Zastava AK-47 that I have. The Zastava uh, M70 is a little bit more forgiving on the magazines. Um, the ones that fit um, the Warsaw will actually fit the Zastava. Um, so like this Hungarian um, um, magazine that I have here, this not only fits my um, Warsaw, AK-47, but it also fit the uh, Zosta AK-47. So uh, the only thing that I've noticed um, when you order a side rail, you can see my side rail on here and see how for, far forward it goes. Now on the Zosta, this is a Midwest. Um, this is a Midwest Industries, and this is the one I highly recommend um, for your. Warsaw, if you have a Warsaw AK-47, uh, this fits on there nicely. Um, this this adjusting screw right here, you actually when this is off, you have to have it off to adjust it. But this locks in place. There's actually a lock down here, and I read really good reviews about this, and that's why I went with the Midwest uh, Industries um, uh, side rail mount. Uh, so I like this one the best. The other ones that I noticed they were less expensive, but they didn't have that lock there. So you can adjust the tension of this lever here. So by pushing up on it and adjusting it here with the, with the screw here. All right, so this fits on there. And you just need it adjusted to where this is nice and snug and won't move around. But when I tried it on the um, Zastava, the side rail mount, this part of it was all the way back here and I thought to myself recoil is going to hit me in the nose or um, these Midwest industries they don't fit the Zastava actually Zastava has their own side rail that you have to get and they're like around $99 at the time this video is being made so make sure if you order a Midwest um, industries make sure it's for a Warsaw or it might fit another AK-47 that I'm not aware of but uh, this does not fit the Zastava M70, okay? And another thing I want to talk about um, while we're on the subject, too, of the side rail mount, no matter which, which rifle you choose. Now, you can, go with, you can go with open sights if you want to because um, it's less likely something to fail. But the red dot, you know, this, it's really good for quick acquisition, uh, the red dot scope. Um, it doesn't have any magnification. You can leave both eyes open, but the only thing bad about it is it requires a battery. So once your batteries go bad, what are you going to do? It, it's, it's pretty much useless. So what I did is I went and bought this uh, UUG, uh, UUQ, and you have uh, backup upper sights on it, and this is a 4X fixed scope. Um, so and it's 32 millimeter objective lens so which is perfect for leaving both eyes open and it does have a green and it does and it has a blue and green um, dot on it too but 
you know, and it does take a battery. But the only thing is, what's nice about it is if the battery fails on you and you're out of batteries, you have an etched in radical with this prism scope. So this is what I suggest. And this would look nice on a on an AR-15 or, or it, looks, it looks really nice. It's very tactical looking, in other words. And it, it looks great on the AK-47. Now, if you notice, I have a half inch riser here too. Um, so you don't have to get your head all the way down on the stock. But I actually, this works better, the riser works better on my AR-15 than it does on here because this is pretty low, the stock is. So I might just take that off and experiment around and just go without the riser on here and try it without that. But um, when I do another video, and that's why it's important to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you're notified because I'm gonna be doing another video. And at the time this video is up, it, it might already be up and running the new one that I make. But I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be siding this in with the Zostava and the Wasar. And we should get much better results than what we did the other day. In fact, let me get this out for you too. Um, right down here with the AK, this is the AK-47, but I was having to aim all the way down here with this. All right, to get them to come up around here, and this is at 50 yards. And then the AR-15 was much more accurate. The groups of five were much more accurate with the AR-15. But I'm hoping to improve improve this um, with that prism scope so but what i'm going to do on this video is i'm going to put together um, the you know following this introduction i'm going to put together some um, some videos of the uh, shtf rifles that i have chosen the sniper rifle um, the ar-15 the m4 that can be used in a, in a shtf scenario and then the ak-47 so i'll have those three guns all in a line um, coming up so this is my colt le 6940 m4 look-alike and i say it's a look-alike because it does not have select fire okay so it's only two positions back here you have safe and you have fire i think this is probably one of the best home defense uh, firearms here um, i like how compact it is this collapses down um, but you know i, I put a uh, a better muzzle brake on it uh, it's still loud um, but and it sends all the blowback to the shooter but it does help you maintain your accuracy and follow up with a second shot that's what I like about it. Um, but anyway, this is the gun that I that I always uh, sleep with, and it's very dependable. It's, it's like I said in that first video, it's a great urban combat fighting gun. Um, it's pretty much near perfect, and you know all the components, internal components, are essentially the same as an AR-15. So Colt did, this is probably one of Colt's best firearms they ever produced. So this is the Armorlite uh, Super SAS uh, 308 sniper rifle. So I have some steel mags with me and these are great for shtf scenarios and also this gun is is one of the best uh, long range rifle i um, have in my arsenal for shtf last one here we go This Ruger Precision Rifle is the mini-me version of its big brother. Um, it is a bold action, and like I said, it is a 22 Magnum. So this is my selection for an SHTF, uh, you know, small game rifle. Um, again, this is a 22 Magnum. fire three and then check it
see they're all touching down here it's just shooting it's just, over here is just shooting slightly to the left a little bit but still you know this this outer circle right here would be about the size of a squirrel's head this is uh, this was designed by Kalishnikov and and he designed a, a near-perfect rifle for sure um, that you can always depend on and you know um, I give the edge to this gun over the LE 6940 in an SHTF scenario. Uh, the Colt LE 6940, I'm not throwing it under the bus by any means because that's a great urban combat fighting gun. Um, this gun is, has a little bit of an edge because, you know, the extreme abuse that this gun can take I don't think the LE 6940 could take the abuse that this gun can. All right, here we go. Here we go. Now the lead sled moved a little bit to the left on me. All right, but I got back in the same spot. Here we go. Here we go. I appreciate you watching. Hit that subscribe button for me. Hit the like button if I helped you out. And most important, share it with your friends. All right? Thanks for joining me, and thanks for watching.